Today, Match and the Macabre has the privilege to interview Ace Marrero, the executive producer and actor for the 2012 horror film <laughs> Madison County. <laughs> Welcome Ace to the Mansion, Ace. Thank you so much for taking the time to interview with us. How are things with you? Uh, things are well. Things are well. <laughs> Excited for this Friday evening, this spontaneous uh, venture into our interview, and we'll, we'll have a good time. What, what is that you have in your hand over there? What beer is that? Uh, I'm actually oh drinking. <laughs> I'm actually drinking Canadian whiskey, uh, Richard. Oh. Fancy. Shame on me for for playing small. <laughs> like I, well, I love see if this makes it natural though. I'm loving this interview. Like, oh my god! Absolutely, absolutely. I, I applaud that. Most interviews we've done, I've tried to be professional. I've tried to have an email interview. Just kept it cool. This is the first actual one-on-one -on -one interview we've ever done. Yeah. It was spur of the moment, as you say yourself, so it's just a drinking interview. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate it. Sometimes I find, uh, you know, these types of things are, are a bit more fun. It's probably more stressful for you, but I, I, I just always think it's more fun. It lightens things up. and uh, It does indeed. You know, because sometimes you don't get jokes and all sorts of tones and stuff through email. So whenever there's a chance for this, I, I think it's a good time. I agree. I absolutely agree. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you were from, and how you broke into the industry? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm from New Jersey originally. Uh, I actually went to a vocational school, so I was I was training to be an electrician, and, and then I was going to enter the Air Force at a, uh, in a position that would let me utilize that. And my parents, you know, it's funny in this business, you always hear, oh, you know, your family is rarely supportive, but it was sort of the opposite for me. My parents were the ones who sort of came up with the idea, because they know ever since I was a kid I wanted to, you know, be an actor, and, and they didn't want me to join the military, so they, they presented that to me, and we decided uh, I'd enroll at, like, a community college, start taking theater classes, and, you know, I played sports first year of college, and uh, I knew that I wasn't going to be going pro, so I would focus more on what my new venture, and um, that started in theater. I transferred to a private women's college, oddly enough, and got, finished my BFA in theater, and, uh, and then... Spent about a year and a half in New York, or working in New York. I was still living in, at home in Jersey before moving out to Los Angeles and cutting my teeth here. You know, and that's when I think things really started to change. And uh, the more professional actor, you know, venture really kicked in at, at that point. And and you know, I met Eric within one of my first years out here on a student film he did called Clown Town, which uh, if you guys want, I could send you a link to, you know, Absolutely. find it somewhere. And that's it, man. We hit it off. We both work very similarly and enjoy each other. We're really good friends with each other and enjoy the way each other works. And uh, we just one thing led to the next. I did that film of his. Then I did another film he wrote for me. It was a feature-length film and he shot for like 4000 bucks. And out of that, Madison County was born and then Roadside than everything else that we've, you know, we've done together since and, and continue to develop. So and that, that's sort of, you know, my background into that. And so what broke you into acting? I mean, what, how did you find your, your, your roots in the, like, wanting to act? Like, yeah, where, where did that yeah, start definitely. from? As a kid, I was always just kind of the class clown. And, and I think it's kind of a standard thing you hear from a lot of actors. You know, people just like to entertain and, and you know, it, you have the early traces of that. But, uh, yeah, that was kind of just always me. And I was always, you know, I was a little ham growing up and, I don't think that's changed much, but like, uh, I just, you know, I, I just enjoy being in front of people and, and I'm a Leo. So, you know, we're naturally love to be around crowds and, 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 and lead in, in crowds and whatnot. So I think it was just something I always enjoyed and I was always just used to that. And of course, I just always loved watching television and film and, and, and I just always knew I wanted to be a, you know, a film star. And, and that was just kind of it. And like I said, I just, I never did any theater or anything growing, going through any of my school before college. And, uh, uh, it really, like I said, was my parents who, who, who kind of presented the idea and, 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 you know, I just ran with it. It's it's interesting. You're actually my, my second independent horror interview. We had the opportunity to interview Bill Evers Jr. We became good friends with. I don't know oh, if you know cool. Bill. Do you know Bill? Uh, Abe Lincoln, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, it's been inspirational, like, talking to you guys. I mean, like, my, my dream when I was younger was acting, too, and, like, to hear you guys talk is, like, I, I, I feel like, I guess you're, like, maybe you're never, I'm 35 now, but I guess you're never too old to, like, jump into it. It's, like, it, I love this, this aspect uh, of this. It's interesting. You've seen Madison, obviously. Uh, I don't know if you remember the character. Yeah, Eric has a tendency to, to name characters, like, man with gun, man with knife, you know? Like, we always <laughs> laugh. As an actor, you're like, you know get the call from your age and you're like they're like oh we get your co-star in this movie and you're like oh awesome what's the character's name you're like guy with billy club and you're like well all right um 
<laughs> so it, it's interesting, you know. Eric, Eric has, uh, you know, he loves to, to do that just because it, I don't know. I, I I can never explain it. You'd have to ask him. But a few of us get names actually in his movies. But anyway, the guy who plays Man with the Knife is this actor named Marshall Yates, and he was in our first movie called The Hostile Encounter, that really low budget movie I told you about right. that Eric and I shot, you know, before Madison. And he's not an actor. The guy is from Arkansas. You know, he he responded to a Craigslist ad. He and one other Whoa. guy. And, oh, wow. And Ooh, yeah, wow. It, for, for the first movie, and Eric brought him in and was like, this guy's scary. I don't know if he's going to kill us. We were all nervous about him being on set, but he ended up being great. And then, you know, of course, Madison County came around, and, and it was like, well, you know, he, he, we have to have him in the movie. He's amazing. And then, you know, it was a perfect part for him. And, and then, uh, you know, he and I in the first movie, he, he sort of my, my my opposing threat in our first movie together. So it was nice to work with him again in Madison County and have the scene where he's threatening Matt Mercer's character, Will, and then I come in and, and sort of save him. But anyway, my point is, like, he, he just got, it, got into it himself. You know, he's the same age as you, and he's good at what he does. And, and uh, there's something I think about kids and then older people who don't have training that parallel because yeah. kids just know how to play and, and how to use their imagination yeah. and they don't think about all of the bad habits and lessons, quote unquote, that you learn along the way that can get in your way. And adults that don't have training, they've already lived life. They already understand how, how things go. and Their ego is not a big factor. So they kind of approach it like a, a child would. So I always see like older actors and, and, you know, I've been in classes for years as an actor and you see the older actors come in or, or people who are not, um, who are just green, who's starting for the first time, but, you know, they're just older in their personal lives, who they just pick up on it so much quicker than uh, someone who's been doing it for five or six years because they don't have to unlearn all this bad baggage. And so I would always say, hey, man, go for it, do it. Our films essentially started because Eric and I both felt like we didn't want to sit on our ass, and we both had people and resources that we knew we could utilize, people that were talented, to, to get a film off the ground. It ended up being, you know, above and beyond what we set out to do, but I think it's just a testament to the times that we're in and the technology blessings that that provides. And uh, so, you know, you could always do it, man. Pick up a camera, get some friends, just throw yourself on there and have some fun, and you'll find magic along the way somewhere. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. awesome. Thank you. It's funny, the whole Mansion of the Macabre thing, through the blessings of Facebook, has become, I mean, the fact that I'm talking to somebody like you, or the fact that we talked to Bill Evers Jr., or the fact that we have 5,000 fans, I mean, it's like, I feel like through the miracle of, like, social networking, we've actually managed to touch base with a horror community, so it's, it's become this whole, you know, this thing, I think it's amazing. Uh, absolutely, and I think what you guys are doing, are, you know, is amazing, and that's one thing the horror genre is, is just great for, about embracing different things, you know, because there are millions of blogs, millions of websites, millions of horror films. But yet we all still follow, watch, and support millions of them. It's just something about that fan base that's really rewarding. And I thank you for, for taking that time to do that. And the fact that you guys take time to transcribe an interview that someone emails or you hear over the phone. I know it's a couple hours of work, so I thank you for, for that. And I'm glad you're able to reach people and, and meet people and, and all those good things. And I hope it continues to grow for you. Hey, thank no, you, man. I thank appreciate you, that. Ace. Mm -hmm. uh, can I just ask, um, how did you find our page? You like sort of like just fell into our page. I'm trying to think. Uh, I think you know, we I'm, featured I'm, you. We do a daily feature. We do a weekly uh, feature every week for for, for upcoming know. horror did films. And when Madison yeah. County dropped, I think it was what's March of 2012, and then you you kind of dropped in, and then you said like, thank you for sharing the film. You just fell in our page. Like, yeah. You were like, whoa, dude, you just fell in our yeah. page. Yeah, I'm like, I mean, you mentioned this before, Patrick, about you know social media and sort of mm -hmm. the blessing that the internet provides in terms of reaching yeah. people so easily now and i think that that's a big reason why films like ours and filmmakers like us are able to have an audience and a venue to sort of present these things you know i mean i would never have been able to reach the amount of people that i have or you know that our film has years ago without money to hire a publicist or whatever but like we can accomplish a lot through that Absolutely. and same with right. you and then you're finding and and I think that that ties into sort of how I probably found you like the one thing I was big on implementing with Madison County and Roadside and anything else I'm involved with is the promotion side of it like as an actor I didn't have a publicist you know when I first started and that I worked with regularly or at any way but I knew like I had the tools to promote myself and I know how to promote myself I feel and I'm not afraid of it so I just brought that to our projects and 
part of that is 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 following and seeing what what tracks and what trends and what people say about the film and and I mean just yeah. before you guys you know before we decided to talk today I was looking at comments on our YouTube trailer for Roadside and internet breeds a lot of easy for lack of a better word just hate I think it's easy for people to just so comment true. and say oh that's so garbage yeah. or that or that you know because people are cynics and it's easy to be a keyboard warrior so to speak you know I've done it I've done it when, yeah. when you know from when I was a kid growing up uh, in the internet age and <laughs> I know what that is but I'm, I'm somebody that I'm not afraid of that like I realized that first of all if someone takes an hour and three minutes to watch our film like I said before I can't you know time is invaluable I can't pay you back you can get your money back for watching our movie if you hate it but I can't pay you back your time and I'm forever grateful for that you know that you've taken the time whether you liked it or not and I understand all you know art is subjective and I don't like everything I watch and I don't expect that everybody's gonna like everything that I do or I'm a part of so yeah. for me the fact that someone is has seen it I can take value in the fact that was a possibility, you know, that they could see it, that they chose to watch it. I mean, I'm always looking, and I probably came across your page wherever you guys posted about it, and, and then, look, like I said, if you guys would have said, I hated the movie, it was a piece of shit, and I probably would have thanked you, been just as, as kind as I am now, no. and still stayed in touch with you. Hopefully you give our second movie a chance. We, you know, we feel like we've grown as filmmakers, and hopefully you'll see that, and I'll keep on top of you and, and remind you of that just because that's kind of what my job is. It's marketing, you know, and it's, and it's promotion. And as an actor and as a filmmaker on the film, I'm very proud of that. And I want to hopefully show different colors in, in, all, in all facets. Well, you know, no, we first of all loved Madison County. I watched like through my hands and I screamed. And it was ridiculous. And I was really sad when you died. But like, it was, it was a great film. I loved it. And it's really a, not, a, not a film that a lot of people know about. So that's what we like to do. We'd like to put films out there that not many people have heard about or they've seen. Well, yeah. And we like to put them out there and hope that our fans will watch them. And you know, usually yeah, they, they, I, they I, do. I agree. It's like, what are, what, are the, what are the advantages of the following we've gotten for the Match in the Macabre page? Is when we did like our top 20 horror films of, of this past year, we, like, like about 10 of those films were independent horror films that people yeah, hadn't absolutely. heard of. So I, I feel proud well, to be able to deliver. Or, or, you know, Hollywood has like the big budget concept. We but, do like, indie films. It's film. great that we have a, a following actually listens to what we, we suggest and that yeah. sort of thing and then we, we are able to like bring forth like independent films and that sort of thing yeah absolutely I mean it, it's great that you guys give a voice to people like us and provide just a, a refreshing sort of introduction in, in ways to, to, to you know to people that don't know about us or our films or any, anybody else you know and I mean I know I've seen other films that I hadn't been aware of through you guys it's kind of an ongoing cycle so that's that's always oh good. awesome that's awesome so, um, so tell me, what appeals to you about the horror genre, and what are some of your personal favorite horror films? Ooh. Um, let's see. Oh, man, personal favorite. Hold on one second. That's my mom calling. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just to make sure I'm okay. Um, no, I, uh, so favorites, favorites for me are always difficult. It's, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not easy to pick favorites, but, um, let, let me think about that a little bit. Um, what appeals to me, though, about the, the genre is, is, it's a lot of what we, you know, what we were talking about. Like, I love the fan base. As an actor in the genre now, the genre is, is so supportive. The fan base is great, and, 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 mm -hmm. and, you know, I think it's some of the most colorful personalities that you'll come across in movie genres of, of people involved and fans alike. Before even working on Madison County and sort of being introduced to the genre as, a, as an actor, I always loved horror films, scary movies. You know, that's why, you know, everybody mm -hmm. called, calls them, and, you know, when you're a kid or whatever. And when we were making Madison, Eric handed me a stack of DVDs, and was like, oh, check out these films. They're similar in our budget range or, you know, or there are things in, in here that I would just love for you to watch just to kind of get a feel of what we're going for. And I didn't realize how many of them I'd seen already. I'm somebody who, I'm a big prankster. I love to, to scare and, and tease and do all these things with people. And I just think there's something about this genre. I always tell people this, and I'm sure one day I'll find a more articulate way to present this thought. But I think there are tons of people who say they hate horror films. They don't like scary movies, right? right? I think a lot of the people, when they say they don't like horror films, it's because they have some sort of reaction. Like, some people are like, I hate them, I, I can't watch them, they're too scary. I watched Jason when I was a kid, it scared the shit out of me, and I'll never watch any more horror films. Or, you know what I mean, this type of thing, you know? I mean, you know, you were talking about how you, want, you cover your, 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 your face, you know? And, uh, <laughs> I did. But what I think is great about it is that people, everybody participates in horror films, whether they, they realize it or not, right? And participates in the, the theme of it. Like Halloween, I mean, come on, it's one of the biggest 
um, oh, yes. holidays of the year. People celebrate this all month long. Like oh, it, yeah. you look forward to it, you Definitely. love it. There's a participation that the, the genre sort of, I guess, demands and gets that I don't think every genre, you know, some people don't like action films and they'll never watch them again, you know, but yet mm -hmm. they don't have uh, uh, an action film holiday, you know, or a theme that they can sort of celebrate, <laughs> exactly. you know, and right. so I like that about that and it's just rewarding in that right. Personal favorite films, let's see, recently, I'll just think of recent films like Insidious, I really enjoyed Insidious, I, th I thought it was very effective. For me, growing up, like, I would be terrified of Freddy, you know, like, you'd be <laughs> on the TV and I, yes. you know, you'd flick a channel his face and I try to flip back and then you know, uh, 45 minutes later, you forget, and I'm channel surfing back around. I see his face again. I'm like, oh shit, you know, and you know, I have nightmares. And and, um, and I think, like, you know, yeah, I, I love movies that have sort of put on you that reaction, you know. And I think Insidious, as a recent film, was was really effective. The sound and, and the story and the visuals, everything was really really well done. I I think James, you know, James, is a fantastic filmmaker. I'm really excited about you know what he's doing. And, and obviously, you know, Saul is incredible. Um, yeah. Um, um, One of my favorites. But, you know, I like all the Saw films. Patrick does not, but I, I love I them all. I didn't watch past five. Um, I, I don't think I've what? seen past five. I've, I've seen all of them except, except for six and seven, or maybe it was even five, six, and seven because it it went a different direction for me. And I'm personally like there, there are certain films that I, I like that are over the top in a sort of a gory way. But like that's not those are not the films that appeal to me the most. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, um, okay. And that's, I think that ties into Madison County. And Madison County wasn't a TNA show. It wasn't, you know, a full yeah. gore, was, gore fest. You know, it was, it it was more in line with the type of stories that we want to tell. And it was more of a, a throwback to the older films where there was yeah. a lot of tension right. and tone. And, and for me, like, I can appreciate those films. Like, in fact, I, uh, my buddy, uh, my buddy Stephen C. Miller, you know, his film, the, the, the Silent Night film, um, I thought that was a lot of fun, and that was, you know, much more graphic and gory, mm -hmm. um, especially, but you know, compared to Madison County, and I enjoyed that. I, I, it was a lot of fun, you know. It's just like when Saw started to go way darker and and, and, and much more torturous. Like it just wasn't for me, you know. I, I don't I don't get anything out of that. Like for me, I, I'm like that's why I think I list Insidious as one of my favorite, you know, recent films is because I like being scared. Right? And it's like, that scares right. the shit out of me. Like, the first Paranormal Activity movie, like, I thought it was effective because of that. And even, right, even right, the, I right, the, right, right. Yeah, you know, right. even the second and third one, I thought they I had agree. their, their things right. as well that made it creepy. And, like, right. when I go home at night and I'm like, oh, my God, I don't want to look behind that door because I just saw this <laughs> creepy movie. That's more effective to me than seeing somebody hacked up and their exactly. eyes pulled out. You know, like, I... I have to be in the mood for that, and, and that's just not always the first film that I'm going to go out and look to see, you know. Right, exactly. Well, you, you brought up a good point with Madison County, what you said, and one of the questions I had listed actually was like, one of the things that appealed me the most about Madison County, and I'm an old school slasher film fan. I mean, I love the 1980s. I mean, my, <laughs> yeah. my favorite films in the 1980s are like, you know, slashers. That, that, that was the heyday of the slasher films. And I felt, yeah. and a lot of our fans felt also that Madison County, you guys really did a good job of like mm -hmm. harking back to that, that mm. golden age of slasher yeah. films. I mean, like, was that the inspiration for that or did you guys like intensely go into that or I mean how did that come about because I mean Definitely. literally Madison County I, I felt it really transported me back to the golden days of slasher films in the 1980s Definitely. I mean you guys had the whole appeal you had the great storyline you had the whole whole concept with that I mean that's what I felt was the brilliance behind Madison County which made it such a successful slasher film and also in a genre that's that's kind of lost its its, its <laughs> strength yeah well, I appreciate you acknowledging that. There's there's always mixed reviews. And Madison County is one of those movies that it's like people will say that they enjoy it a lot, but they don't like it because the ending or because it's not as bloody as they want, you know? Which, like I said, for us at the end of the day, the fact that they watch it, that's a huge thing, you know? It, Madison County was always a, a calling card film for us just to show what we could do with little money. And, and obviously we had roadside and, and we're continuing to work. So it's gone above and beyond in, in serving its purpose, you know? But we still were very focused on, on making a good film that we all liked. And I think that that's what, what was, was beneficial to us because when you make independent films, you know, sometimes you have people that are like, oh, we'll give you money, but you have to put my three daughters in the film. And you're like, well, dude, it's a story about altar boys. That doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Like, it's, you know, it, it, just, right. it just happens, you know. But, like, for us, we didn't have that pressure from investors. We had full creative control. Daniel was the head producer on it. Eric is the other producer and myself. We're all very different. Daniel's more of our business side. He's you know, handles the money. Eric's obviously the creative, the creator of the movie. And I'm in the middle, you know what I mean? I'm an actor, but I'm also balanced, you know, I'm very focused on business and I'm also obviously very you know, on the creative side. So 
we really just set out to make a film that would appeal to us. And I think that that was really the, the main inspiration. Eric's a huge, huge, huge genre guy. So, you know, he would add influences of things that he thought the fans would appreciate. And I would give feedback on the story based off of story points that I feel as an actor, you know, I, I'm used to uh, always being I mean, I, you know, in college, I was reading 15 plays a, a, a week, you know what I mean? And, you know, so there, it was just all these things. Daniel would look at it from a commercial standpoint and it's like, well, you know, in fact, like when we were casting our lead, Coley Bailey, like that was Daniel's favorite from the start because he had the Justin Bieber haircut that he thought, oh, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like funny stuff like that. We really just focused on doing what made us happy and with those things in mind. And we're very thankful that people can appreciate the film for what it is and see past, you know, flaws because it's not a perfect film. Film, but I think it has a lot of story and we didn't want to shy away from that because for me I remember telling Eric I don't like watching films that I don't identify or care for the characters because it's like well who cares if they die they're just a death count at that point I want to care for a character you know I, I think it's so rewarding when I see people post about it's funny these days you know you'll see someone post about Madison County on Twitter like watching Madison County and then like 10, 10 minutes later they're like oh this bitch is crazy or this or that or, you know it's like they give their commentary hey, I and I love that. I every time I see it, they're like oh you know this girl just got this or that guy just got this and it's like if, if, if people didn't care for the characters no one would care they'd be like oh thank god they, they got killed and also too like we developed this because we knew what we were going to be doing with the future installments of the movie you know it wasn't like we just shot it and said hey uh you know what, looks like people like it, let's find a way to uh, make this second movie. Like, we developed it and we shot certain things that we knew would tie into this, the future movies. So, that was another thing. We, 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 were, we were treating this as a franchise, not just one single movie, you know? So, there was always a bigger picture in, 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 in mind that we were aiming for. Mm -hmm. What was your influence for the, uh, the Damien character and the pig mask? Where, where did that, that concept come from? You know, that's, I think that's a question more, you know, probably better suited for Eric. Obviously, you know, he, he created it. Um, you know, our Eric's from Arkansas. Uh, the Razorback is, no you know, uh, the the, uh, the mascot, right? Right. And um, for Eric, he always knew this story took place in, in sort of this farm town. And that, you know, he wanted somebody that looked like they just lived off the land. Like, you know, the, people respond so well to the pig mask and, you know, almost human and Rob Hall and Eric Poor and all those guys did such a great job designing the mask. I mean, it's, it's incredible. But, uh, Madison County and Damien, it's not about the pig mask. Like, I think people will be surprised when they see, you know, what, what we do with the second film. Like, you know, it could be a pig. It could be a horse. It could be whatever animal oh. is that, that he gets his hands on. You know what I mean? So When you speak of um, second film, I hate to interrupt you, but when you speak of oh, second so film, scary. are you talking about, like, a sequel? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, Madison County, there was a bigger script. We toned it down for, to suit the budget we had. This is sort of in the middle of our timeline, the version right. that you see of, of Damien's story. So there's a before, and then there's an after. Oh. Uh, and so, you know, yeah, there, there's there's two sides of it. It really looks like we're going towards the, what follows this, you know. And, and, it, and it's going to be sort of a direct pickup. It's not like ten years later, five years later. I mean, this is like, you know five minutes from now you know what i mean right. so yeah that, that's kind of what i could share in terms of damien uh you know eric has some really interesting stories maybe one day you can uh you know you can interview him but yeah he Absolutely. you know there, there was a yeah. there was uh there were some interesting uh local legends and, and factual stories that he sort of based and paralleled things from the movie off of. that's why we had the whole you know inspired by true events like there, there are a lot of things you know a lot of people think oh every hollywood film's based on true events or whatever but like we, we definitely earn you know earn the right to use that that title and, and you know there, there's several things where we've talked about you know specifically what those things are but uh yeah damien damien was just a character that, that eric came up with that uh he could use to sort of be the terror in this sort of area, Madison County, which is where we actually shot the film as well. It was absolutely successful. I mean, awesome. award, I know you guys were up for a nomination for an award for your your poster for the for the Madison County poster, which, which was also I something that was very before. very positively responsible by a lot of our fans. Tom Hodge, man, he's incredible. Obviously, that's the that's the shirt that I'm wearing. It's, yeah. a, it's our poster, you know, and I, and it, awesome. and it's unfortunate that like awesome. when we were distributed on DVD and everything else that they didn't use this poster, you know, I agree. image I agree. where the, Ab absolutely. Yeah, Image Image had released uh, Chillerama, and which was a very similar hand-drawn type of concept, and uh, 
you know, I guess they wanted to do something different, and Ian, they loved the poster, but they just, you know, it was just a timing thing, and still to this day, obviously, it's it's been up for numerous awards, people love it, and maybe in the future, uh, a DVD, Blu-ray, or who knows, you know, we, we can, uh, we can, we can uh, finally utilize it, because I, I mean, I, I think nothing that has been released so far is, it comes close to the impact that our poster makes now, you know? I agree. So One of the biggest love, comments we got on the page was looking the poster. Yeah. So can you well, tell us a little bit about uh, the, uh, the Swim with the Fishes productions, how that came about, and then the future of you guys? Or Swim with the Fish, it's funny. Um, so I, I love, like, mobster movies. Like, growing up, anything dealing with prisons, casinos, mobsters, <laughs> uh, oh I just, I was always fascinated by, it. like, that, that culture, that underground sort of, you know, mystique. And, like, The Godfather, you know, like, you have the famous, uh, you know, what character is it? But he says, you know, I'm going to make you sleep with the fishes, right? Yeah. Um, and when I was in college, I had a fish, this big, you know, big Oscar fish that I, you know, it's sort of, sort of like my room, my dorm pet. And I heard that it had, like, when I moved away, someone, uh, my, my girlfriend's father actually took it and, and, and cared for it because I, I lived in Jersey and it was Missouri and I couldn't bring it back on a plane, you know. So he, he ended up taking it and lived for a couple of years and finally it died. And, like, as a joke almost, I had all these old videos of the fish. I just made this, like, sort of tribute video. And because of the Godfather inspiration, I said, I don't know if I wrote swim with the fish or I think I said now you're sleeping with the fish or something like that. Well, around the time when, I think this was even before Madison County, I had already started to put together a production company for myself because I knew I'd be developing and wanting to eventually produce films. And that was just something because I tagged it when I wrote that video. I said swim with the fish's productions. It just hit, and I just kept it. And, of course, I, I took out the fishes and made it fish because that just doesn't make sense. <laughs> and, and then it just stuck, you know. And, 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 like, I'm very big on comedy and tragedy. I love those logos, you know, contrasted together. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, all comedy is born of tragedy, and all tragedy, you know, is born of comedy. You know what I mean? Like, someone falls down a stairs, a flight of stairs. People are watching, like, in shock of this tragic event, then when they see the person get up and bust himself off and they're okay, they start laughing, right? They come hand in hand, comedy and tragedy. And um, for me, I started going over this idea for this, you know, a logo. And I was like, I'm, I love the influence. And I'm like, I want this, th I had this image of a guy and, and I worked with a good friend of mine, uh, Dorian West, actually back from New York, who's also a director. And, and I, I came up with this idea of all these things, and he sent me some graphics, and one of them was this guy underneath the water. And I just loved, you know, I told the guy I had some inspirations. I was like, I wanted a guy under the water, like, chilling, you know, like mm -hmm. this, because it, it, it sort of throws back to the whole mobster yeah, thing, like, absolutely. where they tie you up and throw you into the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, tie you Jersey a little bit, too. Looked though. like the guy was chilling, like, yeah, like, no problem, cool yeah. as ice, you know, yeah. because I, I love the traumatic event. But yet, the comedy of this guy with his hands in his pocket, just no no worries in the world. And that's just kind of how that came about. And then, of course, Madison came to begin. I needed I needed an actual animated identity. And my buddy made the one that we, you see in the movie. And everybody loves it. It's funny. Like, Eric and Daniel always laugh. They're like, man, here comes, you know, Paramount's logo. And it's my logo, you know. It's, it, it's just very representative, I think, of my character. And, like, you know, my what I like most in life. And it's just, uh, it just works. It works for the for the types of films and, 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 and types of content type of content I like. Yeah, I was going to ask you, I mean, you wear a lot of hats in this industry. I mean, you're actor, number one. You've also been producer, casting director. Well, which of these is your favorite? I mean, which, which do you prefer to do? What do you think is your, your, your future with it, or how do you want your career to go? Well, I'm an actor, man. That's what I'm here to do, and that's what I have the most fun doing. I also know, like, you know, I worked on Madison, worked on Roadside, and then this summer, I had the great fortune of being cast as, a, as the lead in this film. In Colum that shot in Colombia, Cartagena, Colombia, you know, over the summer. And it was a, an action thriller, the type of film I love to do, you know, stuff I grew up watching that I always wanted to, to be in. So it was a dream job for me just to go out and act, not have to produce, not have to worry about anything else except doing my job. I played a pilot and I got to meet pilots and, and go up and fly their planes for free and to take all these lessons and all these great, you know, actor stuff that informs the story and, and informs hopefully my performance. Um, and, and that's the, the rewarding stuff. Like, we, you know, 
it's the fun stuff. We don't always get a chance to do an independent film, and I was very fortunate for that. After filming, I was able to take away, obviously, some time from, from the producing side because I was busy doing that, and Daniel and Eric were busy working in, on roadside while I was gone. You know, I came back and I realized, like, there's a reason why I was producing, and I've always unofficially produced things. I'm always breeding content and, and developing stories, and some things never came to, but I'm just that's just how my mind works. So I know the creative side of me is also just very ambitious beyond just acting even and that I very much like doing different things and, and uh, casting I love casting directing uh, you know doing casting directing uh, I've cast all our films and I cast another film that Eric just shot in Connecticut for Universal Chiller Network which will come out this year and, and I've been in so many auditions and, and know how that is to be uh, in the actor's shoes that I, I always just like to, to do this and, and sort of provide the in-between, you know what I mean? The real language that Eric intends to, to, to communicate and that will translate in, so an actor understands it, you know? And that, for me, is an extension of me one day wanting to direct. Like, I, I've directed theater when I was in college and, and I've directed some little things here and there. Nothing officially that I couldn't go out there and promote as a director or that I would even try to at this point, but is sort of uh, I very much look up to people like Ben Affleck and people like George Clooney who, who do that type of work and yeah. and I think producing and being a cast and director and all these things in, uh, they influence so much what I learn as an actor and what I can do and, and be considerate of that uh, you know it all ties in it's, a, it's an ongoing cycle uh, I, I separately am also working on things that I will uh, hopefully direct soon myself but yeah I, I mean as an actor that's that's what I'm here for that's what I pursue full time and, and, and everything else just has to work out and sort of complement that absolutely well, man, I mean, um, thank you so much for, for taking this time to, to, to interview with us. I mean, like, in conclusion, I'd say for our subscribers, like, I mean, what, what are the best places to get a hold of you? What, what your websites or your Facebook pages, that sort of thing? Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm super active on Twitter, Facebook. Yeah, my website. I think my website has all of that on there. Yeah, I'm, I mean... You know, I'm beyond available. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can find, find it, my stuff easily. So, I, uh, I always love to hear back from people and hear what people think. And even if they don't like it, I'm not that guy to, to only want to hear positive things. You know, we, we all grow and we all need to, to take uh, criticism and critique. And I, I definitely offer it if people ask. So, I welcome it just the same. Like I said, man, thank you so much. Our mansion doors are always open to you. Thank you for taking the time out of your super busy schedule to interview with us. We look forward oh, to seeing your future endeavors. We look forward to the releases of uh, Blood or Justice and, of course, Roadside. I, I'm excited about both of those films. Right. Thank you. I, re I really appreciate you guys taking the time. And, and maybe, you know, maybe you guys can put a little plug for us because, you know, we're, we're premiering Roadside in the L.A. area March 2nd. We're really excited about absolutely. that. So, we absolutely uh, will. And I think I told you we shot in Virginia, Roadside, and our producer's oh, from Virginia. Yeah. So hopefully we'll have a screening there and you yes. guys can come out. What part, about, what part of Virginia is you filming uh, real quick? Out of we shot in Nor Northern Neck. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, like Tappahannock area. Okay. Um, so yeah. Absolutely. We, we'll we'll definitely so be there soon enough, and then hopefully we, we can see you guys live. Oh, I would love it, man. Thank you so much, Ace. Hey, man. Thank you so much for your time, and keep in touch with us. <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. Ace. Thank you guys so much. I'm I'm sorry. We, you know we had a lot of phone tag and right. internet tag. Okay. I'm we worked it out. It's okay. All right, man. You have a All good right. night, man. Take care. Peace out. All right, you too, guys. Have a good night. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye.